Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making this classic angel ornament from a vintage handkerchief. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make my classic handkerchief angel, we'll start with a handkerchief. I'm going to be <laughs> using a sort of a purple theme today but I wanted to show you some handkerchiefs that aren't ideal for this project. This one is lovely, it's beautiful, it's in good condition, it's a great size. It has all sides um, embroidered the same way. And so when I fold it, the back of the handkerchief is going to show through with all those, all those threads, it's, it's just not ideal. This one is, it has the right idea <laughs> because it has one corner decorated and then these are pretty simple. And then the back side of the handkerchief, here, let me show you. The back side is almost the same as the front. You can hardly tell the difference. And so, but this motif, it's, it's large, but the, reason that I don't choose it is because it's so high. Is this the wrong side? <laughs> also, that was the wrong side of it. Um, it's so high. So what happens is when I shape this into a dress, this gets lost in the pleats at the top and then it just, it just looks dumb. Let's be honest. I've chosen this one, even though it's fairly large, I like the proportions. I like the way that the um, the main image is, is drawn down into the um, corner. And I like the way that these corners are fairly plain. They have some, they have little polka dots, little dots of embroidery, which is really cute, but it's large. So this is about 14 inches square. And I don't usually do them this large, but in order for you to see everything, it's good to have something a little bit bigger. Uh, because this is a 14 inch square, I'm going to use a 25 millimeter head bead. So I've already made the face. And of course you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. Now, because I found some sort of lavender colored tool, I'm definitely going to use this and I'll pull off two lengths of this tool, fold it in half, and then tie it off with some ribbon. This is 1 16th inch ivory ribbon, ivory satin, double face satin. So I'll tie this off in the center a square knot and then I will send these ends through the hole because it's a bigger bead it has a bigger hole <laughs> and then I'll draw this through and I will apply a little smudge of hot glue right here in the back and then I'll just ease that right on into the hole of the head bead just a smudge of glue. That's hot glue. I'm using hot glue. There we go. And now for the handkerchief. Now this is the classic technique. You just sort of fold it and I also press it. A lot of times I find handkerchiefs that have been, um, you know, fold it into a square and starched and pressed and put away. When I get them, I always wash them, but sometimes even after washing, they still have creases. So anyway, um, I, you know, I'm leaving, this looks like a little more than an inch here, maybe an inch and a quarter, but you can use your judgment and use your eye to determine how much of this little edge from the bottom that you would like to see. So then I'm gonna fold it over and overlap. For this size, I'm gonna do about a two inch overlap here. I'll pin it to secure. 
and then by hand, I'll gather up the top edge. I'm gonna start right here to secure my thread. So I'll put the needle in from the back, like that, and then take my first stitch this way, and then just do a running stitch close to the folds, making sure I get through all those layers. And then I'll just gather up all the way around. I like to use a thimble. So then I'll just go all the way around the top edge. Insert the head and the body into the handkerchief dress. You know, at this point, I can tie this off. That looks good. Okay, so remember this, the beginning and end of my stitching is on the side. Usually I have it in the back, but for this classic handkerchief angel, it's going to be at the side, but I do want to pull it nice and tight. And I kind of like for the overlap, so this little overlap part, to be seen from the front. So I turn it a little bit so that the this edge is about like that. So you can actually see that. If you don't like that, then you can turn a little more to the side or whatever, whatever you like. But this is just to my eye. This is kind of the way I like it. So now I'm wrapping very tightly and then I'm going to stitch through side to side a couple of times and then I'll secure my thread in the back. This is a doubled strand of off-white quilting thread. And I'll secure it in the back. And now there's an extra step that I like to take, which is to secure these layers, these underneath layers, not the top, but just these, just with a single stitch here near the corner. There's a corner here, so near this corner, just one stitch. I don't want it to be really obvious. And then I'll just tie that off. I'm using the same thread that's left over from my gathering. I'll just do a little knot right here. That way the dress doesn't, you know, flop open. But by leaving the top layer loose, you know, her dress just looks a little bit more natural. Now it's time for her lace collar. Oh, I forgot. I need to trim the tool here. Trim her little slip like that. Here's how she looks so far. Now for her collar, I'll do a gathered lace. Well, this is only 13 inches, but I think it'll be enough. And so with a double strand of quilting thread, I'll fold over this, the starting edge. And then I go through the loop, the end, the knot, the knotted end. I don't know what to call it, but it's a double strand. So the loop at the end to sort of secure my thread there because if it's just a knot, the knot will come right through the lace, right? And then I'm just gonna gather up close to the top edge. It doesn't have to be neat or perfect. Now I'll place this lace collar around her neck. And secure the ends in the back. So 
So I joined the ends in the back and um, before I tie it off and secure it, I want to make sure that the, um, the ruffles are evenly distributed. So that looks good. So now I'm going to sew through from the back to the front. and then tie it off in the back. Now before I go on, I wanna add a little detail here. And I like this, um, this button. I think it's gonna be just right. But from experience, I know that it's a very small hole in the back, so I'm gonna to have to use a tiny little needle. All right, so I have a small needle threaded, again with a double strand of quilting thread. And I'm gonna come through from the back. I think that looks about right. And just sew through the button. I'm making sure it's centered right underneath her little mouth there. And I want it high enough so that it's sort of, here I'll show you, so that it's, sort of disguises those gathers at the very top. So I like it to come up pretty high. So in other words, I don't want it down here like that. I prefer it to be up. Since I'm using a double strand of quilting thread, I have absolute confidence that this is going to be enough to hold that securely. And I'll just tie it off in the back. Now I'm going to tie a bow from this gold and white baker's twine and I'm just going to glue it underneath the lace of her collar, just right under here. I'm leaving streamers. They don't have to be super long, but I like them to be longer than the loops. That looks close enough. So now I'm going to shape the bow so that the loops are on the outside and the streamers are on the inside. It's hard to prevent the baker's twine from twisting. That's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. But I'm gonna add a little smudge of glue there, lift that up quickly and place it under. That looks pretty good. And now I'll trim off my streamers and tie in an overhand knot into each one to sort of minimize the fraying. Now we'll add the hair. I've been kind of into this auburn hair light lately. <laughs> I like this um, with the purple and the white on these angels. So I'm going to do the um, index card hair. So I have two four by six index cards and I have two different kinds of mohair yarn. This is an auburn color. It's from Etsy. Um, I will let you know where I got it. I'm going to wrap these two strands together and I'm going to wrap it probably about 15 times with both strands. There we go, that, there's 15 times. And remember, since it's two strands of yarn, it's actually 30 and they're front and back. So, you know, if you're looking at it and you think, oh, that looks a little skimpy, it's not, it'll be fine. Now I'm gonna sew with my machine back and forth across the center of the yarn. Also, it, you know, it doesn't matter that they're not like well centered on the card. If I wanted to, I could kind of inch them down a little bit, but it really doesn't matter. This is a very forgiving technique. I didn't have thread that matched this exact color of yarn. So I used brown thread. It's kind of standing out a little bit. It's a little bit, but it won't show. I'm not worried about it. Um, now I'm gonna carefully tear, fold and tear 
the card out on that center perforation. So there's my wig and here's my angel. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of glue right here in the top front, right in front of the hanging loop. And then I'm gonna press the center of this wig right there. And then I'll continue to glue the rest of the wig around the back center. So there's my glue and there's the center of the wig. So right where the line is, where the thread is, that's what I'm gluing. I like to check to make sure I didn't get too low or too crooked. <laughs> okay, then I'll continue to glue down along the side all the way to the bottom where the collar is. Like this and then all the way down to there. And that used about half of the wig. So again, I'm gonna check. This looks good. And I'll repeat for this side with the glue down along here, all the way around to the bottom. I'm just pressing the thread there, the little seam into the glue. Have a little bit of extra. So I'm gonna try to kind of bunch it up a little into the glue. See if that helps. I hate to cut it off. <laughs> so in the back, there's a little bit of extra right here. I'm just gonna kind of work that into the, into the hairstyle. I think it'll be fine. This is a lot of hair. Wrapping it 15 times was plenty. All right, I think that's going to be good. So now I'm drawing the hair up. Okay, now I'm gonna thread my needle with brown, which is the closest I could get to this color. And then I'm gonna secure the hairstyle. All right, so I'm going to draw up that hair and wrap around it with my thread. to create this sort of a bun, sort of like, um, I call it the Gibson girl hairstyle or a top knot. I'm going to first, I'm sort of tying it and I want it to be nice and tight and wrapping it. And now I'm going to tie it off once, but then I'm also going through. I want to make sure that the thread is secure in the hair. That thread broke. That was not quilting thread. I wish I had brown quilting thread. Then quickly, before it comes undone, <laughs> I'll add a little bit of glue here. This is a pre-tied satin ribbon from um, La Petites. So now we'll make the halo. This is seven inches of 20 gauge gold wire. I'll cross and twist the ends together like this. And then sort of open this up to form a circle. Bend this down at 90 degrees, just like you're gonna dye some Easter eggs like that. Then I'll add some hot glue right here on the ends and press this into the top knot right in front of the hanging loop. Right like that. I'm just holding it for a second until the, the glue feels secure. Great, let's have a look. Looks good. Now for the wings, I have I have these wings, which are fabric, which I have left over from my last project, which would be awesome. Or I have some cardstock wings. 
I made these in all different sizes. Okay, these I cut out from cardstock on my die cutting machine. This is, let's see, about four inches. And I think I'm gonna use this one. I just folded it in half and I zigzagged with matching thread to secure. And the instructions for this wing are found in my Focus on Wings video. I like using paper or cardstock for wings because it just adds another element. So you really have a true mixed media when you think about all, there's yarn and wire and satin and mother of pearl and twine and a vintage handkerchief and now there's paper and there's so many different materials. Did I even say mohair for the hair? <laughs> and um, so I, I like that the paper adds just another medium. I added a generous circle of glue there and then I'm just going to press that into the hair on the back of her head. These wings could have been bigger. This is just the biggest one that I had made. You can see that I think this is a little bit bigger. Yeah, this would have been a little bit bigger, but it still looks really good. This is a nice tall angel. Let's see how tall. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, more than nine inches, probably 10 inches tall. And we're done. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.